Come on through, cocky. I want to put my soap on, that's basically it. Let's talk about drag and all its forms. Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on the video. This is going to be my review for season four, episode four of Married to Medicine. Yes, it is late and I apologize, but let's go ahead and get to it. Okay, so we start right off um, with everybody loading up into the car. Um, Quad, Jackie, and Simone, they're on their way down to Nashville so they can go and get started looking for Simone's dad. Um, they rented a house, you know, to stay in out there, and that was a hoot, because it was, you know, the house was, like, definitely not up to the standards that they're used to living in, and I was kind of laughing, because it kind of reminded me of SLVS and the little situations that we had with the house in Vegas, but I had to laugh about that. Um, the very next day, Nikki actually showed up, so all of Simone's backbone chicks was there with her, and I thought that was really, really nice. I was really glad to see that. Um, let me just go ahead and clear that up, because that was really heavy. You know, this whole episode was heavy. But they were down there. They they hung up signs. They went to see Simone's old house, you know, where she grew up. They went to the church where she actually got married and met the pastor and all of that. All that was really, really nice. Um, they had a little bit of a lead where this one woman told them to go down and check the junkyard. She went down, they went down there and it kind of was like a dead end. They did what they needed to do on the trip, you know, what they could do. Um, they also met with a private investigator and there was a whole moment there where she was asking Simone questions that she kind of couldn't answer and it made her very embarrassed at the fact that she had stepped back from her father and hadn't been you know, a part of his life to where she couldn't answer those questions. She got embarrassed. Then there was another little situation where, remember, Jackie just lost her dad less than a year ago, and so did Quad. So that kind of came into play with what they were actually doing. And Simone was saying in her confessional, she never really actually gave that thought when she asked them to help her that they just went through loss when it concerned their dads, but it was cool, you know what I mean, because they pushed their stuff aside, they dealt with their stuff, dealt with their grief, and they're like, girl, it is what it is, we're here for you, let's do this, you know what I mean, so that was like, again, this is one of those times where you see real reality television, it's always refreshing to see, um, this, this time it was very heart-wrenching, but reality, you know, it's reality. And very cool of them to even want to share, you know, to actually share that. Um, so that was cool. Now, back at home, we got Heavenly meeting up with Jewel Tanker. And in short, I just pretty much sat out the whole thing. Jewel's cool. Heavenly... Whatever. I didn't care about what that was. And Jewel didn't. Jewel, the one thing I did, like, Jewel didn't sit around and agree with everything Heavenly said. She didn't sit around and make excuses for shit that Heavenly did. Told her, bitch, you've been out of order. You've been out of order and you need to get in formation and quit. This bullshit that you're doing. If you call yourself going to be godlike and doing things in, in a decent and orderly manner, what you're doing ain't it. Call the folks bitches and, and and talk about their mama and 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 just being all together abrasive. It just it's not cute. It's not ladylike. So I was like, okay, Jewel. Um is what it is. Uh let's see, what else? Janice. Janice. Janice agreed to meet with Heavenly. Heavenly apologized for everything that has gone on up to this point. Janice was open to it, received it, and they're going to try to move on forward from a clean slate. So 
That was good to see. I said, come on, Janice, you better give me couture, honey. This bitch is sitting there with this um, eggshell dress on, and it had this bow in the back, and the bow was real big. It was like you could see it from behind her head because she has the little short, cute little pics. I said, girl, you better give me fashion, Janice, bitch. You better do it. So that was real cool. That was real cool. And I would say one thing that I thought was really cool about Simone, Simone never down talks her beginning. And she never, you know what I mean? Because you see a lot of people who down talk where they came from. She never down talks what her parents gave her or what her parents were able to provide for her. She makes it very clear that she didn't even know that she didn't have until she got to a place where she was able to have more. So I, I just find that, that, I think that's just a good personality trait. And it's just a good look. And many people don't have it. They really don't. A lot of people are so, you know, distraught with what they didn't have and so caught up on what they didn't have growing up, you know. So I, 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 that's very endearing. It really is. Um, let's see. Lisa Nicole. And Darren. These two goons went to see the pastor and the first lady. The pastor and the first lady... Got the side eye, because when I seen him, I said, freaking frack, okay, all right. And their body language wasn't even right. So they couldn't counsel me through a motherfucking thing when I sit over and I look at them, and they sitting looking like they ain't getting along. They're sitting, I mean, they were, Lisa and Darren were sitting all huddled up, but the pastor and the first lady, they looked like two business partners. Like, let's get the fuck through this. Y'all come on and give us this donation and get the fuck on out of here with these cameras, goddammit. And that's what I was, like, feeling for them. I was like, mm-mm. And, you know, the pastor was, like, listening. And the first lady was looking at Lisa and Darren, like, the fuck is this shit? Let's get down to the donation, honey. How much y'all giving, honey? <laughs> that's what I got from her ass. That ugly-ass wig on. Anyway. So on them, um, they gave them some homework, told them, write down five things you like about the other person, write down five things you don't like. Paper's going to be full, paper's going to be full, honey. It's all some bullshit. And got back down to the fact that when you listen to them talk, they don't trust each other. Lisa does not trust Darren, doesn't trust him. And Darren's sitting there and he's talking, they catch him all the time. He, in the middle, answered the question. He said, I've been married to you for, um, I've been married to you and faithful to you for five, um, five years out of nine years. I mean, nine years out of nine years. And then they ran it back. Yeah, motherfucker. Almost half the time that you all been together. You've been cheating, lying, and sliding, and jumping on and off of dicks, I guess. Girl, bye. Get on out of here. Them two are ridiculous, and they need to stop putting themselves out there like that. And then Lisa gets on film, and then she's saying, you know, oh, no, we don't have sex, you know, every day. But when I do have sex, oh, he, he, he hooks it up, he hits it, and it's just... Like, so you're literally sitting on her. We've all been all over the place. We know he fucks other men and he fucks other women. We we got all this. And you're going to get on film and reassure us that he fucks good. That's so bright, Lisa. You just keep on giving motivational speeches, okay? Because you're a fucking idiot, just so you know. If you, have, if you haven't figured it out, you, you're a fucking idiot. Last piece. Fucking tacky ass, dumb ass Toya and Grimace. So Toya's little boy Avery is showing his ass out at the schoolhouse. These motherfucking kids is bad. And I'm sitting there looking at him. I said, look at him still climbing on counters and shit. She had tried to talk to him a little bit, telling him about, you know, he had been cutting up at school. She didn't got a letter from the teacher saying that he can't come back until they talk to him. Talk to her, because he done kicked somebody in the face, and he pissing on the wall on purpose. Not in the urinal, pissing on the wall. 
little nasty little something. So she took the iPad away. Well, she waited till Grimace. She says she felt as though Grimace should actually do the chastising because they're boys. But the one thing that you didn't think about, bitch, they sit around all day and watch that you don't listen to him. So why the fuck they gonna listen to him? He's nobody at y'all's house. He is no one. Nobody listening to that fat motherfucker. And sure enough, when they were talking to the kids, the kids was giving us honey. <laughs> laughing and paying their asses no attention. None. And, you, and Eugene was, he was embarrassed. And he should have been. And she should have been. She's fucking ridiculous. Then he was somehow, you know, he took the iPad away and she studied debate with him on, well, wait a minute. That's too long. Shut the fuck up and let me do this. This motherfucker's pissing on walls and shit. Shut up and let me do this before his ass be thrown out of the school and have an IEP and be listed down as a retarded motherfucker. Shut the fuck up, bitch. Now, I'm going to tell you what you need to do, Eugene. Pay attention. Start at the front door. Get yourself two motherfucking belts and go through there and whip some ass. Start with Toya and finish with the motherfucking kids. Beat everybody's motherfucking ass because that's what's going on in that house. Everybody needs a good ass whooping. And I approve this motherfucking message. And on that, I'll see y'all next week on Sunday. Bye, guys.